Hey guys, this is a video I've always wanted to make, but I knew it was going to be a big job, and I'm lazy. And, uh, I just have put it off for many years. Um, so I thought I'd start with Midgard, that's what I'm planning on playing. And, um, the intricacies of the classes are, are pretty great compared to other games. So this isn't going to be the easiest thing, and it's I don't script much of anything that I uh, do when it comes to videos, so I might miss some things. I'm going to do my best to uh, give a good description on the class roles and the good races to combine with them and why. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, we'll, we'll definitely just start with the classes themselves, and then I'll individually go through the races, explain where the stats benefit you and your abilities and strength and fighting, stuff like that. That way you can kind of determine what race you would want to match with your class instead of doing it for you and, and combining everything. Uh, my dogs are going to be playing in the background, so we're just going to have to deal with that, I guess. Alright, so let's go ahead and rule out Mauler and Warlock. It's not even a factor, they're not on Eden, and that's pretty much where the community is going to be playing for the time being. Um, so we can start at Thane. Thane is probably going to be the one of the more unique hybrid classes besides Valkyrie, because it can be a really potent and nasty caster. They really can put some great damage out. And they have some instant they have uh, some instant abilities where they can cause a little bit of disruption as well. So you're not just uh, stuck in place with a cast time and completely shut down of helping the group if you do happen to find yourself at range. Uh, you can still kind of pop people and make sure that you could cut off a few seconds on somebody else landing a heal on um, one of their buddies, you know, however that works, but they're very tanky. They wear chain armor. Um, their shield spec has a nine second slam. Uh, it's a really nice peeler class and an in-between caster hybrid. And to be honest, their melee capabilities, uh, along with the casting capabilities, are pretty highly scaled. Usually with a hybrid, you would think in a lot of other games that because you're able to juggle some of these things that you're going to be lacking in other categories. But the Thane is really nice because they're great at melee and they're great at casting. And um, they can do some nasty burst damage. Uh, they're a really good burst damage class, to be honest. Thane is really cool. You even have a little bit of beefiness to you because you wear your chain armor. Um, there are going to be legendary weapons that are going to be uh, cutting into your magic resistance, even if they're a melee class climbing on you. There are some situations where the chain isn't going to help you as much, depending on who's attacking you. Um, those types of things are still in the works of testing and seeing how things are being toned up or toned down. Thane, great hybrid. Lightning, lightning, lightning. Uh, that's their actual elemental type is going to be energy. Uh, so they are very fun class, um, pretty damn close to best of both worlds. They're pretty damn close. Very fun class. Uh, Shadowblade and Hunter, they're both going to kind of go in the same category as Stealther. It's going to be harder to find groups. It's going to be harder to get into groups that are running around and roaming around. And sometimes even groups that are killing monsters to EXP up to level 50. You can find yourself maybe having a hard time finding groups. A lot of people would say that they wouldn't suggest you running Shadowblade or Hunter as your first pick when starting a fresh start server or a new season on a server because you possibly want a main character to accumulate gear. Shadowblade and Hunter honestly may even be some of the harder classes to actually finish a template. Um, so getting all of the gear that you need you would probably want to run a more group-oriented class. That way you can gather and collect all your goodies, and then as a secondary character, build your stealther on the side. 
because their play styles are absolutely and totally different. Shadow Blade, you can think of a really heavy, short-range melee fighter. Um, now you can actually apply poisons to your throwing weapons. This is still in the testing phase and actually probably could get taken out if it seems to overperform if you're rooted and you're knocking on nasty-ass dot poisons to finish people off and they just can't seem to break distance without you still doing great damage to them. Um, we'll see if it sticks into the game. Shadow Blades uh, are a lot of fun. You can apply your poisons in combat now as well, so you're not just shut down when your weapons that you have accumulated in your inventory just so happen to use all the poisons on them. I think this also is going to help with not having to acquire so many top tier uh, loot items from raids or legendary crafted items um, just to stack poisons on. So that was always another reason that these classes were really hard to template as a first character because you need a bunch of weapons. As for like if you're a warrior or a berserker, you have a set of weapons and you don't swap them often. Now you definitely will get different weapons as a berserker and a warrior and these other classes. If you get a set of procs that go off on a weapon that are debuffs or give you a celerity haste, and you don't want these procs to just keep going off because you pretty much already have them on or you have that debuff on an enemy. Now you want to swap to a weapon that puts disease on the target or life taps a target, does something different. That would be a reason to swap your weapon. But for the Shadow Blade, you weren't just swapping your weapon because of the procs on an item. You were swapping your weapon to continuously apply different poisons. So you're still going to have to do that, I imagine. But running out of poisons in the middle of a fight, let's say you win your first fight and now you're in a second fight, but you just used all your poisoned weapons on the first target, but you won. Now you're fighting the second target trying to win, but none of those weapons have poisons on them, so your DPS and your potential is just plummeted. And now you're just relying on your melee damage alone. So I think that that's going to help out a lot mid-fight, secondary, third fight down the line if you can't pop back into stealth or get out of combat. I know that was a big rant on the Shadow Blade, but those types of things are important, and hopefully those will um, seem to be okay to keep in, in the game uh, with Eden. Hunter, these guys are stealth. You don't want to get attacked by big groups. You don't want to get attacked and rolled over by the battle groups and stuff in uh, New Frontiers. These guys are able to choose what fights they do or don't want to get into, basically. You have much more control on how often you die. You have much more control over the situations that you put yourself in. So these are the two classes, I would say, that have a little bit more of that type of power. Where all the other classes in the game, besides the two stealthers, and then Albion has the three, you can, um, you know, they're kind of stuck. You, you get caught, you get caught. Um, that's it. Either done for or you're going to have to fight your way out of it. Hunter, um, they're interesting because they are the ones that are able to utilize two-handed weapons as their melee choice. Um, and their archery is extremely potent and nasty. So you got full-blown archery, uh, but then you also can drop some pretty significant bombs with your two-hand weapon or your two-handed spear. The two-hand sword ten and, uh, tends not to be used as much because the spear has a rear stun on it and has a side snare. Um, so sword has different styles. I'll tell you right now just to get this out of the way. Weapon types are usually chosen for two reasons. That's going to be the styles in which you get positionals, um, dehaste, bleeds, stuns, all of these things are they usually get favored of what item and what type of weapon you want to use because of those types of styles. The second reason is because certain items are going to give or certain weapons are going to give certain procs. If the spear tends to have more accessibility to things like 25% melee haste celerity procs where it would if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think so, two-handed sword doesn't have any weapon that gives a 25% celerity proc. Could be wrong, but I'm almost positive that that's the case. So another reason maybe people like going spear to get the celerity proc, and you switch to a different spear once that bad boy procs off because 25% um, 
more haste for more <laughs> melee damage output is probably pretty nasty. So Hunter, great stealther as well as the Shadow Blade, and tons of range, and you ex you actually get a pet. This one this one gets a pet versus the other realms. Um, I've seen hunters really pull off some awesome fights. Uh, you may not get a shield stun. You may not get some of the other types of utility that the other archer classes get in the realm. But for you to be able to sick your pet off onto a healer or a caster so you can finish off your target is pretty nasty. They're an interrupt tool. Um, I'm not sure how great they are on Eden when it comes to damage output. Even higher level ones might do snare procs to lower the run speed of other people so you can get away and maybe even do the disease proc here. I'm not 100% sure on that either. Like I said, there's a lot of things on Eden that are different. Um, definitely go look at patch notes and things like that on Discord if you're curious about these things. I just want to give a basis. We're going really slow. This isn't an easy thing to do. These classes have extreme, unique play styles to them and they separate from one another greatly. Spirit Master is also the caster pet class and uh, of the realm, besides Bone Dancer. And um, Life Tap is really seems to be the primary spec line for this class. The pet can also intercept melee attacks on you, so you're not guaranteed to take every single swing that is thrown at you by melee. A lot of people enjoy the Spirit Master because they're almost like a battle mage. As long as your pet is up, you're not getting absolutely melted by melee. People have fun playing them even solo. It's a very group-oriented class, especially now that they've added casting debuffs, like um, magical resistance debuffs on them, along with the Rune Master. So you are lowering your enemy's magical resistance for a really short window of time, and when you communicate that to your other group members, you can then focus together on that uh, target that you've debuffed magically for all of your spells and your friend's spells to do an unprecedented amount of extra damage. So it's kind of like focus firing, you're, and you're assisting one another when you do these things. So Spirit Master also even has access to an area mez. They have a single target route, so they have a little CC and a little bit of control in their arsenal as well. I've honestly ran with groups and played in the past where people say, please don't use Spirit Master's area effect mez because it's a lot shorter duration than someone like the healer. And what happens is if you have people that are running Determination and that lessen their effects when a CC is landed on them, like a Mez puts them to sleep, if yours only lasts for 30 seconds and they have a bunch of bonuses that are re producing these things, it wears off extremely fast. But if you would have faith in your healer, their Mez is way longer. And what happens is if, if you land a root or you land a mez, even though your root is an extremely long duration on the Spirit Master, so don't ever worry about doing that. Just don't break other people's mesmerizations and sleeps accidentally rooting things because that removes one of the CCs. Um, people are immune to mez, roots, things like that after they've been tagged with them once. So if the shorter duration then puts a, a buff on your enemy that prevents the healer or someone with a longer duration mez to put them to sleep later on when it really could hold tight versus the Spirit Master one. There are certain situations where it's fine to use it, but not high duration. So they do have CC in their arsenal. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit lower duration, so just be careful using it in certain situations because you might even upset some people. If you're running alone, if you're running by yourself, you better put people to sleep at every opportunity that you have. It's never going to be a detriment to you. So, fun class. Um, they have a lot of tricks up their sleeve as well. Eden is adding more group efficient poten uh, potential to these guys. Really like to see it. Um, the Eden team seems to know what they're doing to make all these classes synergize well with one another and actually have a desire to get these classes into groups where maybe a rune master or a different class would have been prioritized strictly. So rune master, 
Uh, they have access to two of the largest ranged damage oriented abilities that also have some of the fastest cast speed of those two 20 second cooldown bolts um, that any other class has on the realm. And not only do they have a higher damage delve, but they cast and leave you much quicker than the other spells do. They're pretty, they're pretty bursty. Um, the problem is you can't use either one of these bolts for 20 seconds. So once you've launched off these two bolts, they both go on a 20 second cooldown because they're nasty. They're super nasty. They have 800, 1875 range where a majority of damage oriented spells are 1500. So you're able to toss these off when other people can't even quite get to you to even begin casting their spells. They have some travel time, right? So you have to put all that in perspective. You're sitting there trying to get these bolts. Maybe that guy gets into a 1500 range and begins to cast a sleep on you before the first bolt even hits them to interrupt them. It's situational. It all, it all depends. You never know. It's a very big possibility. But great damage. They also now have access to a try magical debuff, just like the Spirit Master does with the different three uh, magical percentage groups. I don't remember what Spirit Masters 3 and what Room Masters 3 are, but you can find that on the Discord on what magical types that they actually... But it's one spell and three categories, whether that's Spirit, Energy, Heat, or, you know, Cold, Body, uh, Matter. It's three things. One spell uh, should be around a six-second duration, so you need to get to work quick. If, you're, if you put this debuff on, you need to let your group know that it landed and everybody needs to just climb all over this person with spells and finish them off really quick. So yeah, Rune Master is probably like the, it is the magic class of the realm. Um, so and I do want to add Spirit Master and Rune Master uh, both wear cloth armor and will take the most damage uh, style, you know, for, as a character. Uh, from melee abilities, and you have lower health pools. Um, so not only are you taking more damage from melee, but you will be taking more damage. Uh, technically, not more damage, but you will be finished off quicker by spells because you have a less uh, amount of health versus some of the other classes. All right, Berserker is going to be... I wouldn't say that... It's hard to say, actually. Is this the secondary best tank in the game, because they're called light tanks, um, but Berserker doesn't have access to shield, so he's the only one off the three realms that doesn't have access to shields, making it kind of hard to ever say that he could be a secondary tank. Sometimes I would even say in certain situations that Valkyrie could be more of a secondary tank, because instead of wearing studded armor like the Berserker does, which is 19%, melee absorption, just like the Hunter. By the way, Shadow Blade wears leather, 10% uh, melee absorption. Hunter's 19%, and so is Berserker. And that's another reason Hunter can be a little bit uh, beefy uh, be and be kind of cool, because they can take a little bit more melee um, damage. So Berserker, they've lessened the time on your berserking, you can say it like a berserking rage, but you go into a vendo bear mode where you're outputting, I think it's like 19% more damage with your uh, melee attacks. You can be extremely bursty when it comes to melee. You can be really nasty. It's just hard to say where they totally are. I love Berserker, uh, even if they were a little bit of an underdog and have maybe just a little bit less of what you wish that they had. Um, still a really fun class and something that I like to play a lot and um, would may maybe even play as my first class when Season 2 starts. But they are the, the light tank. They are technically supposed to be one of the secondary tanks of your realm. Um, and they dual wield, so that's the kind of the... If, if that's kind of like your role play style, it's what you like, um, I would just go for it. I wouldn't even stress about if they kind of underperform or, or what, because Eden is really working hard on making sure that some of these light tank classes like Berserker are brought up to where eight-man groups aren't going to be so quick to say, I'm choosing this other class instead of Berserker. 
um, Berserker and Warrior, and I think Savage, uh, they have access to a Stoicism, which is a natural... Warriors, I think, 25%, and I think Berserker and Savage is 20%. Less duration, and some people have one-minute sleeps, guys. So you can really get locked down in this game. Berserker, Warrior, Savage have a natural bonus to alleviate a lot of that duration from themselves. Then you have realm abilities. When you kill enemy players, you can build this strength called Determination, which then stacks on that 20 or 25%, depending on what you pick, Berserker, Savage, or Warrior. So, you know, some people run 50% or more reduction on these nasty one-minute roots, one-minute mesmerization. So you're already knocking 30 seconds off those bad boys. That way you're back into the fight, and um, it's hard for them to lock you down. So those are the benefits big time when it comes to grouping for these classes. Uh, of course, Berserker has a five-second side stun um, to where you can quickly stun something, hop onto another target, maybe stun them. But your important role as a Berserker is to know when to really stick on something to keep interrupting and doing damage and when to what they call float. When you want to float around, you want to transfer snares and and run speed positional snares on targets that way you are maybe making it to where their enemy tanks and their enemy melee classes are creeping and they can't catch your friends so that's where you would float around and kind of one hit one hit on specific targets to l help lock down the enemy team as a melee it is not all about climb on that target and finish them because when it comes to healing in this game healing is extremely potent the second you realize that someone that you are attacking is being focused heavily with tons of heals it's a really good habit to get into to recognize that and try to move to another target so you aren't you aren't useless to your group and you're not no longer are you helping because this person is never going to die so it's always good for you to recognize that type of situation and move on to the next and move on to the next. A lot of the time you'll be in Discord communicating these things, uh, whether that's your style or not, but people will let you know and you may be the main assist and you may be the one letting people know. This person is not receiving heals. We already have two or three people attacking this one target. Take them down, take them down, take them down. That is usually the time to kill. You don't want to just assume that if this person's getting heals, that it's good for you to just stick on them. I mean, you're going to get lucky, and people are getting heals, and you're burning down on them, and you keep getting about 50% health, and it just so happens that one of your friends interrupted that healer, and he stopped getting the heals. But if you moved, you could have stayed on him, and since he's not getting heals all of a sudden, because you didn't know that the healer on the other team got interrupted then you could have killed him. So Dark Age of Camelot has a lot of uh, strategy to the fighting aspect of group play, but it still is never 100% on what you should or shouldn't do and when and where. It's very in-the-moment decision-making. It's very exhilarating. Uh, it's, it's a great game when it comes to that. Sorry to stick on Berserker for so long, but I think the melee um, job is important to portray when you, it's you know wanting to decide what class you want to pick, uh, Valkyrie. So we know, oh, I can't do a female. Valkyrie is going to have instant cast healing. They wear chain armor. They have access to the shields and that nine second stun. And you can also go to your back bar two handed weapon, uh, just like the Thane and the Warrior can. So really nasty class. The instant healing isn't isn't huge when it comes to group play it still can be a real big change but when you're getting focused and you've got magical debuffed and you only have that instant cast heal on like i think it's a 20 second timer if i remember correctly it's down you got that nice little chunk it feels good but i'm telling you if you're train getting trained down um you're barely even going to notice that you tapped it they can still be a great tank uh, they really thrive at one versus one. 
and one verse, maybe two, three, who knows, four, um, whatever. But when you're going against skilled groups, you wouldn't want to pick Valkyrie because she's so tanky she'll never die. If you're fighting a lower number of players, that may be the case, but in an 8 vs. 8 or in a battle group, um, it's not like they're invincible. Uh, Warrior is going to be a more unkillable class, even though they don't have access to any self-healing, believe it or not. And I'll explain all of those reasons why uh, later. Valkyrie's really great. They're just a hybrid like the Thane is, but their hybrid abilities is not really casting spells. They have instant cast damage spells and instant cast and pulsation that go on their own frequencies every six seconds or so. Uh, cone frontals. So, you know, let's say you got a whole group that's immune to mez and roots and they've just removed everything and there's nothing you can do to lock down the enemy. A Valkyrie can't actually be really nasty because they can interrupt and really cause massive amounts of disturbance to the enemy group if you're on them and you're facing them and you're hitting these instant cast abilities uh, you, you know you could if there's eight people stacked on each other you can interrupt all eight of these people if you're fighting an eight versus eight and then when it comes to battle groups you can really cause some nasty disturbance uh, pulsating these frontals making it to where people can't cast spells, they can't heal their friends, they can't put anyone else to sleep. Valkyrie is very situational as well. They're not invincible. Um, don't think that you're going to go out and be the best tank in the whole world. It's not going to work like that. Warrior is always going to be the best in that aspect of things. Period. No matter what. Um, but very fun class. You even have castable heals. They're not going to be greater um, style heals. I don't believe on Eden, could be wrong, but I don't think you have greater heals. Maybe you do, I, I actually can't even remember. If you do, you're never really going to spec high enough in men for them to be absolute bomb heals when you're casting them, and you tend to have a smaller mana pool, I believe, than a lot of the other healer classes, just because of the armor and stuff you're going to pick. Might not focus as crazily into some of the capacity. Now, I could be wrong about that, too. Maybe, like, some of the templates could run really high power pool percent and really high um, mana cap stats. I have no idea. Who knows what the Eden template potential is here? Um, I'd, I'd look at them as, like, yeah, they could be a third. They could be a third little backup healer. You know, if you're really good at swapping from melee into a quick, I'm going to help heal because I know uh, friends are locked down, you can do it. Now, if you have a caster train that is out of their mind with damage, you are never going to outheal an actual full-blown, your buddy just got magic debuffed, and there's three serious casters nuking him down. Valkyrie will never outheal that. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, if some weird situation, you completely nerfed yourself in melee uh, potential and went full-blown mending. I just don't think you have the power pool and the mana to do it. Who knows? I could be wrong. It could be interesting to, to see if you could be something like a warden on Hibernia and be a full-blown nasty mending healer, but I don't think you have greater heals, which is a different class of, of healing that costs more mana but heal for more. I can't remember. I'm sorry that I don't remember, but you guys can look into that. All right, great hybrid. It's the healer tank slash melee hybrid. Thane is the casting damage tank hybrid. So those are the differences between them. All right, Warrior gets natural health percentage increase because of the class. One of the reasons they're one of the best tanks. They get, I believe, the highest percent of stoicism to reduce their effects of mesmerizations and roots and things and stuns that lock them down. What, that's why they're one, of the, they're one of the best tanks. And then they also get really cool abilities down the line that reduce their amount of magical damage that they receive when they use those. So I've seen warriors in a certain window of time. They're unkillable. They're actually unkillable. So you have to leave the warrior completely alone for those things to wear off 
um, to go back at him later on to get rid of him. Warrior can be and is the best class uh, for a tank. They're going to be the tank for raids. Uh, if that is your playstyle, Warrior is the way to go. You can uh, focus all the way into your hammer, sword, or axe, everything into shield, and actually have a lot high, higher parry than a lot of the other tank classes are able to focus into on the other realms. The other realms have to do a two-handed spec and put a focus into their thrust slash um, crush for that t for the weapon skill and the weapon damage variances to equal out. Warrior doesn't have to do that. That's one of their big things. Warrior's chain armor, uh, that's the best that Midgard has. So you technically have the best uh, melee absorption available on the realm. So does Thane. So does Valkyrie. Um, so that's why they tend to be the tanky classes of the realm. Warrior on top every time. No comparison. Warrior is the tank of the realm, period. You can't go wrong whatsoever with them. If that's your play style, then there it is. Scald. Uh, Scald is the primary run speed of the realm. When you're out of combat, uh, your travel speed is really important. Um, this will kick back in if your group is able to separate from a fight from enemies. I think it's around 8 seconds, if I remember correctly, is out of combat. Uh, out of combat's like 8 or 10 seconds. Um, maybe it's 10 seconds. If I remember spamming first aid, I think it tells you. I believe it's 10 seconds. But to re-engage speed, uh, kiting is a big deal. Uh, people love it. You also get a really important spell called uh, Speed of Sound. People call it SOS. You and your entire group has permanent run speed as long as they don't attack things. And you are all immune to root stuns, snares, and mesmerization spells. It is a get in or get out 10 minute timer realm ability that no other class has access to in the realm. A lot of people require to have a scald in their 8 man group. This is an extremely sought-after class. Some people are trying different eight-man builds and aren't stressing on Scald uh, and aren't stressing on SOS being a make-or-break, and they get an extra Rune Master or an extra healer or whatever the case may be. Um, but Scald Super Melee, they have chain armor as well. Um, they can do a one hand, but they can't spec their shield, so it's going to have like a flat 5-6% block chance but you have no styles with your shield. You can't shield stun for the nine seconds like all the other shield users can. That is a, a big loss, but you have um, side snares to make enemies run slower with your weapon, um, and having access to the two-hander, you can output some good damage. Scald is a huge interrupter, meaning they have four... You got a mez snare, two DDs, which is called direct damage instant abilities on 15 second timers. They have a lot of instantaneous uses to spread out on people to keep them from casting spells on you and your friends. They're huge interrupters. And then you can instantly put someone to sleep uh, on incoming or if you're trying to get away or if it's something important. You see a bard that's about to land a blanket mez on your whole group. Some people say do it, some people say don't because um, the Scald Mez is a low duration and the Bard, I believe, has a mesmerization um, buff on themselves so it's really not going to last long. Is it better to get the Bard Mez so they don't land a Mez on you immediately and then they're out of that Mez and in the fight for the next one minute and you're having to worry about them Mezzing? Or do you want to make sure that it's just all up to your healer? A lot of people say, leave it up to the healer. Please don't put short duration mezzes on targets. And this is very high skill gap on, you know, groups and stuff. Don't stress on it. Don't pick your class because just one ability might not be preferred in a group play. Scald is one of the nastiest solo characters in the game. Your traveling speed and your potential for health regeneration, pulsing, um, is a lot of fun. It's one of the most fun solo hunting classes in the game. If you like to just run around by yourself and jump people and get fun fights solo, 
Um, Scald is definitely one of those classes. A lot of these other classes uh, can all thrive pretty well. Um, Warrior might have a hard time if you're against certain classes, but they all they all can do it, right? They all can do it. But Scald, man, whoo! Scald is really a nasty solo class because of the amount of utility and the damage that they can still do. Um, so yeah, very fun class. Definitely look into that. Speed, health regeneration, pulse, uh, magical resistances, um, some endurance um, buff, so your party's using less endurance when they use melee abilities, which isn't the hugest deal these days, but it's still pretty decent. Um, so yeah, I could probably go on and on about Scald. I may have even missed some things. Oh, they have a pulse that absorbs, um, it's either physical or magical damage, low amounts, but in a certain percentage of it, but it's kind of like a buffer, you know. You know. Um, Scald is not going to ever be as tanky as Warrior, period, done deal. It's just no discussion when it comes to Warrior as a tank. But Scald's utilities and all their goodies and stuff, groups love them. They're really nice, even leveling up for PvE and RBR PvP. Uh, Scalds are great. You'd have a lot of fun. Healer is interesting on this realm because Healer is very self-explanatory with their name. They're going to be your primary heal source in groups uh, besides Shaman. And not only that, but they're going to be handling all of the area stuns. Uh, a lot of the rooting capabilities can still come from them. And the area mess is going to come from them. They don't have an instant amnesia, which amnesia is... it. It ruins the casting of your enemies. If you land an amnesia on someone and they're in the middle of casting, it fails and they have to restart their spell. It is a really fun shutdown ability. The catch is healer actually has to cast it on a timer. Um, Bard on Hibernia can instantly use it while casting other spells. It's always been kind of a controversial thing, but uh, it's necessary to keep classes unique and different and realms all um, utilizing these skills in different ways. So healer, you still get good base buffs to make your friends stronger. They're the only class that gets access to the best haste for melee, and then they cast celerity on top of their base haste that makes all of the melee units in their group hit an unbelievable amount faster. So healer is just loaded with utility. It's absolutely wild. And sometimes it can be overwhelming because you are responsible for so many different jobs where on the other realms, sometimes you're just healing. And, and yeah, you can do some damage and you can pop some single target stuns out from time to time to help the group, but healer takes on so many different roles in one class when it comes to support. So healer might be like highest skill gap, uh, skill ceiling, real, real deal. I would think that healer probably highest skill ceiling. You've got a lot on your plate. Um, your brain is having to process when to do things because you have the ability to do it. And uh, people are relying on you to figure that out in the moment and make the right decisions. Are you going to heal your friend because you're the, one of the strongest heals on your realm? Or are you going to put everyone over there uh, asleep? What do you got to choose? Um, do they Are they immune to sleep so you need to cast some stuns on targets that you know are immune if you know they're all immune to that, do you want to root the melees down so they're not hitting your friends anymore? Do you need to amnesia cast on the bard that's about to blanket mez your whole group? Um, you know, these you have to sacrifice doing one thing to do another. And healer has the potential of doing a lot of those things on the one class, which makes them extremely fun to play because you know that you have the ability to do so much. Not only that, then you're making all of your melee fighters in your group do unprecedented amounts of more damage output. So that's super important. 
those types of things all add up when it tries to when it comes to the brain trying to process what the hell to do in those certain situations. Great, great class. Definitely, if your role is a healer, um, this would be the class you would pick. But there's another class that might be a little bit less stressful that can still be a great healer and do the job just as much as the healer can um, in some aspects without having as access to as many instant heals on timers as the healer. But, um, yeah, so if, if you're just not quite ready to have so much responsibility and have the entire group relying on you for so many different things, then healer might not be for you because it's not just about healing. I'll tell you that. Um, shaman. So shaman has access to the best buffs in the game. This is very important because... The best buffs that you can get out of a potion, if I remember, memorize this correctly, is like 118 uh, to your strength, constitution, dexterity, and uh, quickness is around 93, I think they changed it to, 93 quickness, um, and 155 strength, 155 con, and 155 dex, and probably around the 90 or so on the magical stat um, for casters to make them hit harder and have more mana. Shaman gives all of that. It's very important to have those cap full capacity buffs on all of your friends. It makes the difference. It really does. Your friends cast faster. They hit faster. They have more health. They have more mana. Their spells hit harder. Their melee attacks hit harder. Um, all of those things are really, really important. They add up in a fight. Uh, on a slow trickle, for sure. Healer and Shaman both also are the biggest givers of magical resistances. Shaman gets three, and Healer gets three. So that's why a lot of groups want to have Shaman, at least one Healer, at least one Shaman. Um, it all depends. Maybe some groups are want to go double Healer and not stress on the shaman. I really don't know a lot of the metas and what people are moving into now, but um, in my eyes, probably pretty important. But hey, with the debuffs that Spirit Master, Rune Master, and the other two classes that they have picked for the other realms, you know, what if the magical resistance debuff is so unbelievable out of this world that even if you have 50%, what if you can just remove it? You know, what if resistances aren't as important as they used to be if people only cast spells on enemies when they know that that magical debuff is on that enemy. So would it shut down and completely remove and null and void the resistance buffs that Shaman and Healer give? I don't really know the full capacity, if it's a full 50% debuff or what. But if you run Healer and Shaman and they both have the cap resist buffs, you got 50% cold resistance, 50% heat resistance. You know, this is huge. So a lot of times in, in the past of what I'm aware of is that shaman and heal, at least one shaman in the group um, and at least one healer in the group, I know that some groups like to run two healers because um, healer has so many utilities and tools that they have so many different ways to spec the healer that focuses in different things. And maybe one of the healers isn't a good healer. Maybe they have all their spec points in... Um, bonuses and mesmerizations and stuns right so it all depends and maybe the shaman and the second healer need to take over more on the healing aspect of things so shaman best buffs in the game period really good to have uh, and then they have a ton of disease options disease is a 50 percent heal reduction on the enemy so when you have a nasty shaman in the group and even if their healers are absolutely fantastic, if they're healers and they don't have good cooperation on removing those diseases, their heals are 50% less potent, allowing your group to chip away and chop down enemies without these heals just full healing them constantly. Shaman is extremely nasty with that. They have uh, lots of dots. A single 1875 bolt on a 20 second timer, just like the Rune Master does on the two bolts. Shaman has access to one of those if he goes high enough in cave, which is going to detriment his um, healing. So it, it kind of depends on what this Shaman wants to run. 
and um, you know those types of things are important. There's a lot of spec decisions to make on these classes. Dude, it would be hours. I would make a video and it would be hours for me to explain all of the spec lines of each class. That's why I'm being really thorough on like the basis explanation of these classes because I almost feel like I can't make a video on all of the different options that the classes have because it would just be ridiculously long. Real deal. So this is uh, this is just to give you guys that aren't fully familiar with the roles and classes and what their best abilities are when it comes to group play, solo play. Um, yeah, so I'm doing my best. So yeah, Shaman, decent little damage, uh, decent dotting, get some interrupts in there, really piss people off. Uh, you got to be careful because you're going to be breaking mezes and breaking roots if you're a little bit too overzealous with your damage. That can be a problem, uh, but the disease is important to reduce enemies' healing. That's where the shaman really shines, in my opinion. And the interrupts when you when you know the group's been mezzed and rooted so many fucking times that they just it's not gonna. When you know that the group has been mezzed and rooted so many times that it's just time to lock them down in a different way, which is interrupting them with area damage dots. Shaman really shines at that as well because they're all ranged. There's so much to each class in this game. There's so many playstyles. There's so many different ways to utilize a class and, and decide how you want to play it. So uh, I really think that they've always done a great job with that in Dark Age of Camelot. So let's move from Shaman. Um, definitely secondary healer, by the way. They can definitely be secondary healer. Very potent healing. So don't forget that. Uh, Bone Dancer. Bone Dancer is one of the most interesting pet classes in the game besides Thurgist. Um, uh, so they have access, I think it's a primary pet that's the strongest. And if I remember, it's four sub pets? Is it four pets? It's three or four sub pets. Um, this changes a lot on certain servers. I think with Eden, it's four. I could be wrong, man. I might be wrong. Regardless, um, it's the pri if the primary pet dies, you lose all the sub-pets. So you have to keep your primary pet safe. It's the commander. It's a lot of the time called the commander. Um, you can use a casting version of this commander that's hitting things from range to interrupt mostly. And even have the sub-pets as little casters. And they're interrupting. It, uh, Bone Dancer can be a nasty interrupt class. They can be a real pain in the ass, and you're also pretty decent casting damage yourself. You have an instant cast, um, I think it's on an 8 second timer, but it's an instant cast, and not a lot of people as a cloth wearing caster have that. By the way, Healer and Shaman both wear um, chain armor, so they, uh, they both have the 27% melee absorption. That's kind of cool about them versus, um, uh, you know, Bard on Hibernia that's only reinforced. Um, so Shaman Healer also wearing chain armor, that's pretty cool. They can be um, decently tanky against uh, melee classes, which is not too bad. As a healer, you don't want to die too fast, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so Bone Dancer is, the pet, is another pet class like Spirit Master of this realm, and um, it's a big nuisance. <laughs> it's a really big nuisance. It has uh, a good bit of utility. You can't put people to sleep. Um, you can't do things like that, but your pets and you yourself, um, sometimes you can make a bone dancer feel like two, three people. If, if they're not controlling your pets and controlling you well, then um, you're a, a really big nuisance. They're pretty strong. They can be a lot of fun. If you're really into pet classes, you might even prefer bone dancer over spirit master because they just, uh, they're very unique, very different. Um, you need to be really good at babysitting your pets, though. If you lose your pets, you know you're oh just a weaker caster in a lot of in a lot of sense of the word. So uh, babysit your pets. Don't let them run off and get you know blasted down. Uh, then you're stuck sitting there, stump, some trying to summon pets while your group is dying and you guys are trying to struggle to kite and all that. So uh, they they are a double-edged sword. If you are caught off guard and you're losing pets. And, and that becomes your focus is just constantly trying to get pets back and losing them over and over, then uh, it can be rough. 
So yeah, lots of pet management. That's a big deal with the Bone Dancers. Spirit Master, not so much. One cast, you got your pet back up. Not really the biggest deal in the world uh, because your spells are still pretty nasty. So um, even if your pet dies, you don't immediately have to toss it back up to get a lot of your utility and utilization back up. With a Bone Dancer, your pets are a really big part of your kit. So I would say that, um, yeah, get good at babysitting them. Uh, but spells are fun. Spell you still have root. You still have some things that can control people, and um, your damage still can be good. You're, you know, don't sleep on the bone dancers. Castable damage. It still can be a great asset to assist with other really strong casters and make um, the difference in if a target dies or not. So yeah, fun class. Really cool class. Very unique. If you like pet classes? It's definitely the one for you. Uh, you'd enjoy it. Savage is going to be kind of the optional class than Berserker. They focus on hand-to-hand, -hand, but what's interesting is that uh, some people actually can go two-handed weapon. They have 30-second timer usables that when they wear off, they take little chunks of your health. So you sacrifice a little bit of health once they wear off in 30 seconds, but in that 30-second window, you have all these crazy buffs on you that make your defenses go through the roof and your damage um, increase, and you have your own personal celerity. So there's base haste in the game as a buff, and then there's celerity. They stack with one another. So for um, Savage to have access to their own celerity uh, and not have to rely on healer or a weapon randomly procking and giving it to you you can enter a fight and your first hit is celeritied up and you're continuously eating away at things they can even have a chance for um, their weapons to triple and quad attack so even though you have two weapons in your hand where the berserker is always only going to be hitting with both the savage has chances for these claws to actually hit more than the two times, the maybe three times, four times in one swing, they can be really bursty. They can have unpredictable damage, and a lot of people like that in group um, situations because if you have anything that's consistent, is able to be judged, and we all have learned that from other MMORPGs, and where they call that that burst damage that's really nice to utilize, so you catch the enemy healers off guard and they can't save their friends because hey, a savage hit you for that much damage, okay, if he's going to hit you two, three more times, I can judge that. But with the savage, is interesting because the savage may do this amount of damage that time, that amount of damage this time, and then for some reason, they hit you that time, and you just lost a significant amount more HP than any of the healers could have been expecting. So a lot of people like savages in the group as a choice over the berserker, which is why... Uh, Eden is looking into ways to make the Berserker and other classes that struggle like the Berserker does to be a little bit more wanted in groups and give them a little bit more um, utilization in their damage kit uh, in some way. Like Who knows what they're going to do, <clears throat> but we'll see. You know, your damage, um, out of control damage is on a five minute timer. As for the Savage, um, their unpredictability is at all times. Uh, so yeah, they are also in medium armor. Bone Dancer is cloth armor. Bone Dancer, Rune Master, Spirit Master, uh, cloth armor. You're going to be getting hit harder with melee attacks than any other class in the game. That's their downsides because they're casters. Tons of utility. The more utility you tend to have in the game, the less uh, health pool, the less protection that you have is usually kind of goes for all the realms, usually. Uh, so yeah, Savage, another light tank. It, it, you know, Midgard has always been a melee focus versus a lot of the, you know, realm. You could uh, say Albion realm is like a caster focus type realm. Um, and they, t they tend to build their groups that way. I guess you wouldn't really say that they are. It just seems to be that a lot of the meta style and groups would go that direction, I guess you could say. And then the reason that, you know, Midgard has the healer that can celerity this big nasty melee group some people like to go that way. So it all depends. It just depends. But yep, Savage is the secondary light tank. Um, they can be better. They could be worse. We're, we're going to have to see, right? These things are changing. 
um, and, it, and it just kind of depends. It, it's all kind of random. But holy crap, I can't even believe that we made it through all the classes. Uh, I feel my voice kind of giving out a little bit, actually. We just went hard. If you have any questions about the classes and things like that, add them in the comments, and um, I'll be able to look at things, um, look at patch notes, look at changes, find out information for you that whatever I missed on these videos, and uh, relay that to you later on. So add comments. Please sub to the channel. I really would appreciate that. It makes a big difference, um, and will go a long way in the future, and we'll see what happens. So let's go over the races. Real deal. We're just going to break it down like this, you guys. When you look at these stats, Norseman's going to be a, a very well-rounded. I believe all classes, I'm almost, I'm, I don't know why I wouldn't, but I'm pretty sure all classes get your 30 remaining points. If you, they like to automatically spec you in. Some of that is fine, and then others maybe not. This is going to be controversial, because I like to solo, and it's hard for me on some classes to get the 250 quickness when I'm using buff potions. I like to go 10 on quickness, because I'm not really stressing about dexterity. I'm trying to hit faster, period. And so some people say, that's not right, because you can get to the 250 quickness when you're running in a group. If you're a group player, don't stress about it. If you're a solo player, don't stress about it. This is personal preference. Don't, you know, this isn't like you have to do it. But you're definitely going to want to put your 10 points in con and 10 points on strength for Berserker, Warrior, uh, Valkyrie, Savage, Shadow Blade, um... So yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, so Shadow Blade, Thane, Shadow Blade, Thane, Hunter, Berserker, Warrior, Scald, Savage, and Valkyrie are gonna go ten points in a strength and ten points in a constitution. Period. There's no getting around that. You're gonna want to do that. That's just a guarantee. It doesn't matter. Oh, I want to build this way. Oh, I want to build that way. Thane, Shadowblade, Hunter, Berserker, Valkyrie, Savage, Warrior, Scald, 10 Strength, 10 Constitution in your starter stats. So Spirit Master, Rune Master, Healer, Shaman, Bone Dancer. I'm almost positive you're going to want to put your 20 points into Dexterity and then the 10 points into your uh, primary casting, which is going to be P80. It'll always, so whatever caster class or healer or whatever you pick, it's always going to tell you what your realm's primary mana stat is. So don't stress about putting it in the wrong one. It's always going to be highlighted for you, actually. Yeah, so no matter what, if, even if there's no points in it, it's going to be highlighted for you, so you can't make that mistake. Those last five points in decks, that's ten of your points. But that's also two Og Dexterity trainings, because one Og Dexterity is only going to give you four points. So you wouldn't be able to reach that five anyway. And um, that may only be one point, but let's say you're trying to get that five point down the line. Shit, it could cost you four or five realm points if you're trying to get to a certain point. It, it's the way to go. Con oh yeah, that's why. Constitution does not give you the same amount of hit point benefit as it does if you're a tank or a certain type of class. There's a huge, huge type of diminishing return, you could say. Like one constitution is only going to give you so many hit points as a spirit master or a rune master, but one constitution, if you're a warrior or a berserker gives you way more hit points for that one constitution. That's why people just say, screw it. It's not making any difference whatsoever, basically. I want the extra dexterity to cast my spells faster, because spells is all I got. So that's uh, one of the big things. Now, the reason I left out the other two points for, uh, you know, like, you know, remember, Thane, Shadowblade, Berserker, 
Valkyrie, Warrior, Scald, Savage, 10 Strength, 10 Constitution. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way. There's no way. You'd want to do the 10 Strength, 10 Constitution. Your choice into things like Thane and Valkyrie, you might want to put 10 points into your Piety and sacrifice dexterity and quickness, vice versa. These are, you know, things that you have to think about. More healing, more mana with the Valkyrie. More damage, more mana with the Thane with your spells. Or do you not stress on it and you go dexterity to cast your spells faster as a thane? Right? These are things that you need to think about and judge on your own. That's a, it's a good one, to be honest. It, I mean, that's a really, a really good one. I would say, if it was personal preference of mine, to go dexterity... So you make sure you get your spells out there faster. Ten dexterity is a good little costly chunk of uh, aug dex if you had to waste points in the realm ranking system. So yeah, yeah, maybe you would benefit getting more mana and healing from the Valkyrie with that. Uh, but yeah, it's all this all personal preference. But at that point, man, I don't even want to say I could give you a solid answer. I just know where the strength and con, what classes it should go into, and where the dex and the um, piety should go into the caster class classes. Hybrids, probably still going to want to do your strength and constitution 10 and 10, but where you put that other 10, I think that's going to be up to you guys. That's going to be how you want to build your class. I don't think it's really honestly going to be a make or break. Dexterity and casting speed is really important, though. So don't sleep on that. I don't know if you really would want to choose mana and magical damage on Thane and Valkyrie um, over Dexterity. I really don't know. I really don't know, especially with the Thane. You know, maybe Dexterity wouldn't be so big on the Valkyrie. And maybe that would be okay for Pi uh, Piety, but Thane probably want to get those lightning spells out there a lot faster. I'd say the 10 dexterity on the Thane would be a bigger deal. It's funny, I'm kind of like brainstorming randomly on this shit too. But yeah, healer, also get the uh, the 20 into dexterity. You need you need dexterity, guys. Especially for the healer. You're, you're one of the slower casting healer support classes um, in the game. Uh... Yeah, I, I wanted to give you a basis on on the stats instead of what races to put with the classes because those are kind of up to you too. Like if you know what the stats do, strength for damage, um, constitution for health, dexterity for casting speed, quickness for melee speed, um, then choose what would be best for you. Troll, highest strength, Lowest quickness. It's got slower weapon speed, but hits harder than a Norseman would. So that's that's kind of the thing. I, I feel like I could go a, probably a long time. I'm exhausted from making this video already, you guys. Holy crap! Uh, I was more, I was more wanting to like give you the roles of the classes, what they do, why you would want to play them, and the importance of the stats themselves. So now it's your job to go to the races that you're planning on pairing these classes with and find out what things you want to focus on more. Are you okay with sacrificing quickness as a troll so you can just drop absolute bombs when you do swing your weapons? Because troll can still get a pretty decent amount of quickness with buffs and things like that. So pe some people just want to go crazy on the strength. These types of things are totally up to you. A lot of people go Frost Elf for healer. They, uh, they want more mana. They tend to have uh, more mana and their dexterity is good enough, you know? So it just is totally up to you guys. Play around with that, experiment with that. I wanted to make this video to give you a basis on the really important stuff um, and that to give you some sort of comfortability on what you might want to pick for Season 2 
on Eden and know what you're going to be giving and benefiting to your group and um, what classes you could play as solo, right? So Thane, Shadowblade, Hunter, Spirit Master, Rune Master, because they have run speed as a Newt caster, even Berserker, because they're just so nasty. Warrior might have a little trouble soloing sometimes, but Scald, uh, even Shaman sometimes can pull out some solo action, Bone Dancer from time to time, Savage, they all can be great at solo. So there's so many classes that are great at solo, it's just I gave you the big differences when it comes to group play on their desirability and their jobs. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe I'll make some on the other realms, but do I want to help the other realms? Really? I'm picking Midgard as a primary realm for Eden. Should, it might be another content creator's job to make videos on Albion and Hibernia, because uh, we need to make sure that our team is coordinated, knew what classes they wanted to make, and they got them 50 right away and didn't have to go and make a secondary class because they didn't know what they were getting themselves into and find out they didn't even want to play that class in the first place. But thanks to my video, now you guys know exactly what to make, exactly what you're going to get to level 50 first because you know the role that you're going to play and you're going to be on the battlefield sooner and you're going to be in the raids and getting your gear sooner. We're going to be taking keep sooner and we're going to be the ones invading the other realms sooner. So I, uh, I like the idea on that one. Much love, you guys. Please sub to the channel, show it some love, share the video, show other people. Please leave comments in the video to ask me any questions that you guys want on more specific um, things on the classes and races. Anything that you're curious about, I'll do the research for you guys. I know where everything's hiding on the Discord and uh, where all the devs leave all the goodies and the information. If you guys don't want to go looking around, I'll climb around for you and gather up all the info that we need to... Find out exactly what you want to play uh, Season 2, December 2nd, uh, when it comes out and we're getting it together. All right, you guys, I'm, I'm burnt out. This was crazy. <laughs> I love you all, and uh, long live Dark Age of Camelot. That's for damn sure. 22 years, baby. You guys have a great day, night and afternoon, whenever you decided to watch. See ya.